Hello everyone, today we're finally going to be addressing a bit of a meme that's happened between my sister and myself, my younger sister I should say. Uh, a couple months ago I was completely out of ideas, I guess it's closer to a year ago, uh, for videos and she jokingly suggested being able to change the color of the font uh, on a page. And ever since then it's become this joke where every time I have to go record a video she tells me I should just go record the color changing font video because I'm clearly out of ideas and completely washed up. So today we're going to uh, address this so that she can find a new reason to bully me. Uh, side note, if you're not watching right now, the uh, World Chess Championship's on and I don't know, there's not a lot of marketing for it, but uh, it's been keeping me going this morning. Uh, but anyways, we're going to be using the Colorist Color Picker for this. So if I come over here, click Edit Post and we click on one of these, you can see it pops up this neat little color picker uh, that then saves your hex code into a field. So we're going to be using that. Uh, I'll have a link to this in the video description. They also have a uh, an alternative package on npmjs.com. I'll have a link to this as well. And in here you can have a yarn command along with some along along with some TypeScript support if you're into that type of thing. But okay, let's go ahead and let's get started. Uh, we'll CD out of here. Stop the server, CD out of here, and rm-rf video, because this is my third attempt at doing this without the uh, VS Code crashing, hopefully. We're going to do a Rails new video, dash J of ES build, dash C of bootstrap. We'll CD into the video app, and we'll run a code dot. Go ahead and run that. Okay, so the basic idea for this is we're going to uh, have this form save both of these uh, into a text field. This gives you the hex value. And then uh, on the other page, I just actually refreshed. Uh, on the other page, we'll save this as a inline style for the specific colors. Now, because we're gonna be using multiple instances of a color picker on the page with differing behavior between the two color pickers, there is a little trick you're gonna have to do, uh, but thankfully the wonderful documentation of this plugin, which again, this is like one of the best uh, documented things I've ever seen. Uh, it has a whole bunch of uh, useful stuff that's been completely commented so you can see all of your different options in the actual object itself. So we'll take a look at that as well. So to get started, let's hit F11. We're gonna run a Rails G scaffold post. We'll give it a title and a body of type text. We'll then give it a font underscore color of type text or type uh, string by default and a uh, background underscore color of type string by default. We're using string here because it's just gonna be a hex value with a hash in front of it. So it's just gonna look like this. Uh, and of course, this is definitely small enough to just store inside of a string. This does not need to be a uh, text uh, field, right? Now let's do a Rails G stimulus, call this the colors controller for our JavaScript. And then let's real quick go ahead and pop over to the NPM page, grab the yarn add command, paste this in because we're using ES build. Go ahead and run that. Now we can come over to our Explorer, come down to the gem file. Inside of the gem file, uh, in my case, I need to add the form and gem. It should work for you out of the box as long as you're not using Ruby 3.2 and your computer doesn't hate you. You should just be able to uh, work with that. But if you do run into an error, just go ahead and run this with a bundle command. It should fix it right up for you. We're then gonna come over to our app, our config and our routes.rb. Inside of our routes.rb, we just want to set the root of the application. So we just want to say the root is going to be the post controller and the index action. Go ahead and save that. And now we can come up to our app, our views, our posts, and our post form. Inside of our post form, the first thing we want to do is bind the controller for the stimulus controller. To do this, we can come inside of the parentheses of our form. Just go ahead and paste in a comma data colon and then inside of these braces you're going to have your controller with the name of your controller which of course we called uh, the colors controller right here so that works for that now it'll have access to everything inside of here which means if you want to uh, do anything special it's pretty easy to set up now these are going to have an id uh, associated with them out of the box thanks to rails so we'll have an id to reference inside of our colors controller so let's come into the colors controller real quick. If we come over to the uh, NPM page here, we can see there's two imports we need, one for the JavaScript, one for the CSS. We'll just go ahead and import both of those. Once we're done with that, it gives us two commands to run here. One is to init the colorist object. The other one is to assign it the element. So inside of our connect method, we'll just paste in both of those. Now this isn't going to work out of the box. Even if we run a bin slash dev, 
because we have to tell it which element to connect to. I wanna do this with a running application though, because if we click new post and we hit control shift I, I can hopefully show you how to find out what the ID of this is. So you just click the little arrow, click on the field you want. In this case, I'll use the font color as an example. You can see here, hopefully, uh, that the ID is uh, essentially the name of the model underscore the name of the field. So our field name is font underscore color. Our model is post. So this becomes post underscore font underscore color. It'll work the same for the background color. You can then grab this, come over here, paste this in, uh, save this, come over here and refresh. And now you can already see you have this uh, little transparent icon here. But now if we click this and select any color that we want, it'll automatically put it into this font color. Go ahead and uh, save that do a test a case and we can go ahead and click create post. So now that's being stored in our database. We can refresh. It'll never change. Let's go ahead. Let's set up the background color for the background color. This will be a post underscore background underscore color and save that click edit post. And now we have a second one. So that's pretty cool. Uh, oops. Let me go ahead and do this. Come over here, change it to the cyan color, click update post. We now have each of those. Okay. So, this is great, but what about the customization options? If we come up here, we can see that the uh, customization options have a couple different options like the dark mode, all the swatches and stuff like that. So how do we use those? If we come in here to the, uh, the commented section of the code, we can pretty much just pick one of these. You can pick the pill theme, which is going to give you a lot of these little bubble things uh, with this little uh, pill icon, right? And uh, if we come in here, it should hopefully show us uh, let's see, the swatches that you can include. So let's go ahead and let's copy the swatches real quick. Uh, and then we'll paste this in. I'll just do the swatches for the first one to hopefully illustrate a point. And then after this, we'll do a theme. We'll do a, uh, what, what were the themes? I think one of the themes was the pill theme, right? Let's come up here. Cause I think this is probably the best way to illustrate a part of the problem. We'll grab the pill theme, do this. And then after the pill theme, let's do one more. And let's change this to be a theme mode colon. We'll use uh, dark for dark mode. You can also use auto if you'd like. Come over here, refresh. Let's click on the green. And now you can see it's the dark mode. It has all of these swatches by default. So you can you know pre-bake in some colors. That's pretty cool. And then of course, our other one down here for the post background color is the same theme. So here you can see a part of the problem. These are sharing the same instance. So let's go ahead, let's get this working with updating the actual text itself, and then we'll deal with the consequences of it sharing the same theme. So to make it actually change what's on the page, I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna do something that my physics professor would love, but the rest of you are gonna hate. Uh, I'm gonna change the foreground color to a nice little neon yellow and the background color to a dark blue, because just like my physics professor, I don't want you to be able to see anything while you're paying thousands of dollars uh, to learn. So this gives us the, uh, the hex code. We now need to just put this into the page. We can do this by coming over to the app, the views, the posts, and the post partial. Uh, apparently I'm charging you thousands of dollars for this, uh, this video. That's uh, <laughs> my bad, sorry about that. Uh, but we can come up here to the div for the background color and we just add in a little space with some style. So it just looks like this. Uh, with an enter and a tab. Uh, the style is equal to background dash color colon. And then inside of this, we just put in our post up background color, simple enough. For the actual font colors, you can just grab those and you, same, same thing. So let's come into the font color. After the P tag, do a style equals color colon and the post dot font color. Go ahead and save this, refresh. Now you can see this one has that nice little neon uh, yellow color that just really pierces the soul. But what happens if you want to affect all of these? Maybe you want the whole thing to be completely unreadable, or at least more so than it currently is, although the black really isn't doing us any favors. Basically, just grab this uh, this font color and just paste it into the rest of these P tags. And now every time you change one, it'll change all of these. Pretty cool. Okay, so let's come in here. Let's change this to, I don't know, like a white. Let's change this to a black. Click update. Looks pretty cool. It looks like my uh, my MySpace page would uh, if if I had one of those. Uh, okay, so now let's let's take a look at how we can change the behavior of each of these. So only one uh, has this like dark mode or whatever. To do this, we can actually come over to the GitHub page real quick, and if we scroll down, there should be a note 
on simulating multiple instances. They give you uh, one option, which involves adding an input listener, but this gets really messy. Uh, but as of one of the uh, updates, 0.15.0, uh, they actually have a method of using uh, instances. So we'll take a look at this real quick. Effectively, what we have to do is come into our form. And for our form, what we want to do is give each of these a class. So we'll come to the font color, give this a class of font color, and then we'll come to the background color and we'll give this a class of background color. We can then come over to our colors controller. And in here, what we can do is uh, we'll leave this as just using the, uh, the element right here, something like this. Go ahead and backspace this as well, save this. Uh, and now what I wanna do after these two is create two distinct instances. We're gonna be using the colorist.set instance and then the first class that we put on the font color. So that is the, uh, the font color right here for this class. We're gonna be using that, so dot and then the class name. And then we just give it some options. We tell it that the font color can only use swatches. It only has these three swatches as options. The theme is pill and the uh, theme mode is dark mode. For the uh, other one, we can come down here. We can say this is the uh, background color. Swatches only is false, but it does have access to these three swatches. So let's come over here and let's refresh. And now let's take a look at this. We'll click on the first one. This one only has swatches. So let's grab this color. And then for the background color, we can click on this one. It's still light mode. It still lets you use the slider. Uh, and this is gonna be <laughs> <laughs> absolutely ugly uh, but hopefully now you get the point you can customize each of these uh, any any options that you do not set explicitly on these instances they will inherit from their parents so if you give this a uh, parental default of like I don't know uh, light mode and you or dark mode and you don't specify uh, it should override the, the parent here uh, so if you come over here and refresh, click edit this post, hopefully. So now you can see this one has a dark mode by default because we haven't specified it for the background color. But yeah, that's all I really wanted to talk about. Hopefully this uh, was helpful for you. And hopefully this gives me an excuse to find uh, a new reason to have my sister bully me. <laughs> but yeah, that's going to do it for me. Uh, hopefully this is helpful and hopefully I will see you in the next video.